Hey guys, I've been trying to decide the best way to go about making this video because I keep trying and failing. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is um, do just a really quick intro and then read you something. And then maybe we can talk about it. Um, so I haven't seen this topic on YouTube real at, at all since I've been on YouTube and I was doing a search just before I started recording and I couldn't find anything even outside of neo-pagan and new age communities here um, and my own experience physically in these communities has been that this topic very rarely comes up um, most people aren't aware that it's even an ethical issue so I wanted to just read something and maybe um, Maybe just, I mean, maybe just bring it up and kind of open the floor for discussion. Um, and the topic is, as you can tell by the video type, uh, the video title, uh, the ethics of crystal mining and purchasing. Um, so I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs. Um, so if you want to just listen to the sound, I'm just going to be looking at a book. So visually, not very exciting, but pretend it's a podcast or something. I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs from. Uh, Catherine McMorgan Douglas's Wicca 334, Further Advanced Topics in Wiccan Belief. Um, okay, so if you've got the book, it's page 161. Some thoughts for the collector. Collecting crystals can be rewarding and fun, whether done for a metaphysical purpose, educational purpose, or for no reason at all. There is, however, a downside to crystal collecting, and that's the blood that may end up on your hands if you are not careful. That sounds scary and a little overdramatic, but the fact remains that while most crystals sold in this country are mined by professionals in safe mines or come from the byproducts of regulated industrial mining, a small percentage of crystals come from places where the living conditions, let alone the mining conditions, are appalling. These crystals, sometimes called blood crystals, can come from countries with oppressive regimes, even modern day slavery, and very often there is simply no way to know whether your crystals come from these countries or not. This has led many people to primarily purchase stones, crystals, and jewelry marked as originating in Europe, the United States, and Canada. This can understandably limit the variety of crystals that you are using for any given purpose, but it allows you to have some degree of assurance that no one has died for your stones. While these blood crystals and gems primarily are the higher end stones, emeralds, diamonds, and sapphires for example, the middle priced stones often come from the very same places. Diamond mines, for example, nearly always also produce garnets, and often when oppressive regimes have their diamond trade stifled, the garnets and other lesser stones still slip onto the market. Unlike diamonds, which are now becoming well documented as conflict diamonds or blood diamonds, as they come more into the public eye, lesser stones are often ignored when it comes to their sources and who they fund. This is no little matter. The worst terrorist organizations and the cruelest governments are funded by blood diamonds and blood crystals and other conflict stones. As diamonds become more difficult to sell, other stones become the funding source of choice. Already tanzanite, rubies, emeralds, and jade have been found being mined in similar manners, and rumors of illicit tourmaline and garnet, two relatively inexpensive stones, have abounded as well. Pearls and amber, too, long viewed as safer materials, have their associated dangers. In addition to conflict stones, improperly harvested pearls are threatening several aquatic species, and runoff from amber mining threatens several others. When it comes to pearls, the regulating associations are doing a fair job, and it is my understanding that large quantities of amber found in countries with strong environmental policies have led the worst of the amber mines to be abandoned for lack of profit. Um, this can make every trip into the Jewelers or New Age Emporium a headache for those of us trying not to fund conflicts or environmental damage. So thank you for sitting through that. But um, uh, McMorgan Douglas raises some really good points, and I just think they don't get talked about. Um, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a very rare seller who can tell you where exactly their stones come from. And this makes a difference. Um, stones har harvested in the United States are not harvested under the same conditions as, as stones in Africa. And I don't know if any of you guys just Google blood diamonds, or if you saw that Brad Pitt movie that came out a few years ago. I'm kind of making a joke, but um, but it's really it's it's really serious. I mean, people die over these. I mean, personally, I think you really have to be like politically unaware or maybe just morally deficient in order to wear diamonds nowadays. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a real issue, and that's not to say that crystals are always harvested unethically, although, 
I mean, the fact is that all crystals come from mining, and mining is not good for the planet, okay? I mean, there, there are degrees, of course, but um, one of the reasons why so many stones are so inexpensive nowadays, um, I mean, McMorgan talks about garnet and tourmaline, but even just, even just quartzes, um, one of the reasons why they're so expen why they're so much cheaper nowadays is because um, mining techniques have become a lot more efficient and we're able to mine larger swords of land faster, um, which is detrimental from an environmental perspective. And it's just something to consider. Um, so when you're making when you're making crystal purchases, um, it's just it's just something to, to be aware of and um, it's not just, I mean, she admits that some of the language she uses is, um, she says it sounds melodramatic, and there's this, uh, there's this, kind of this element of maybe, like, scaring people a little bit. Um, but, but her points fundamentally are right, that the purchase of, of precious and semi-precious stones is an ethical issue, and I think it's just something that doesn't get discussed in pagan communities, um, and that's a shame. So... If you, if you're into crystals and you also are a pagan or you consider yourself an environmentalist or something, it's just, it's an issue that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Um, so if you do use crystals, I'm, I mean, I'm curious, like, is this something that you've thought about before? Is this something that you've ever talked about with your friends or with um, your crystal dealers? Um, if you sell them. I'd be really curious to know how you source them and who you decide to buy from and why, aside from price. Um, and anyway, I'd welcome anyone else's thoughts. Like I said, this isn't something that I'm particularly well informed on, um, but yeah, just wanted to throw that out there because I don't think it's been talked about. So.